love leg day. All the muscle definition just goes away. You just got big old tree trunks for legs. Second day back in the gym, it's a leg day. Our split right now is basically chest back on Monday, legs, Tuesday, shoulders and arms, Wednesday, and then repeat. So we're training them six days a week. If I need an extra rest day, I take an extra rest day, do some hike or something, but besides that, six days a week. I'm gonna show you a little little life hack. You guys might have seen this if you watch Fitness Culture on my channel. So if you can't front squat, can't get in that mobility, you can always use a strap, wrap it around your hands. Boom, front rack position. Jumping into this leg day really focusing on going a little bit heavier today we haven't done a front squat in a while been doing a lot of body weight stuff which has been great able to train heavy though is always nice right now i went over the split with you guys so this is going to be our first leg day of the week it's going to be our heavier day really focusing on working off our one rep max for five to seven reps we're gonna try a front squat in an actual rack position on this one see how it goes been a minute since I actually held a front rack. Really focusing on getting depth without getting too low. Jake has had bad knees, so he really has been training around that, predominantly doing box squats. So you'll see us using a bench here as well. But again, we're going to 275 on these front squats. No excuse for leg day. Gotta do some squats. I will say this though, all this body weight stuff we've been doing really helped with muscular endurance and just feeling better. Feeling good in the joints, taking a break off. You can see Jake utilizing the box squat here. Nice and slow, touch and go. Not bouncing off of the bench, but touching and coming back up. I'm using it more to just get depth. When I feel it touch my butt, I know that the bench is there. I've now hit 90 degrees. Boom, time to come back up. My right knee, if you guys have watched Morgan's video, you can hear it clicking like crazy. It sounds pretty gnarly. So trying to steer clear of going too, too low on the squats where you start developing a little bit of the knee problems. but. Definitely focusing on getting to that 90 degrees. You can also see we're using a slant board under us right now. That's really to put more of an emphasis on the, the front part of our quad rather than the glutes. Always nice to have a partner when you're doing a heavy leg day because legs can just suck at times. It's gotta be one of those things you need to get through. Also spotting, even if it's just watching. Uh-oh, Parker, we're getting leaner. That cut's starting. We're gonna have to put some new holes in the belt. It's gonna be our last set here. You can see we're well over 315 now, moving to back squats. So this is our last exercise, moving to back squats from our front squat. I like doing this because you're loading up the weight with your front squat. Obviously, you're not gonna be as strong in your front squat as you are your back squat. So you do your front squats and then you do a couple sets on the back squat. So this one, we went a little bit higher rep-wise, eight reps or so. Again, Jake's utilizing that bench to know how much depth he's gotten. I like doing a little bit of front squats and back squats. The program might call for five sets of front squats and I'll do three sets of front squats and two sets of back squats. That's what we did today. Don't always do that, but it just feels good to train heavy again. All right, next up, we are going to our reverse lunge. Reverse lunge here, you can just see, using a weight that we can still do six to eight reps on our heavier day. And this is a reverse lunge. You can see we're taking a step back. That's really the only difference between a reverse lunge and obviously your standard lunge. Um, you can either alternate each leg or you can just continue one after the other and do the same side for switching. All right, from our lunges, we then went into a RDL. RDL, Romanian deadlift. You can see here, this is a great developer for hamstrings. Really, we're focusing on pushing those glutes back, keeping that bar nice and tight and, and building big old hamstrings. I always use straps on these. I don't want my grip to fail before my hamstrings do. Definitely always strap up. And you can see I'm really trying not to lower round that back at the bottom. So I might be stopping just short of the bar touching the ground, but you can see my lower back. When it rounds, it's not a good thing. So we're supersetting this with Romanian deadlifts and a reverse lunge here. So we're working quads and hamstrings and glute. Next up, we're on to leg press. Now this is gonna be part of a giant set that we do. Our leg press here, pretty narrow stance here. I typically would go a little bit wider, but using more narrow of a stance is gonna really emphasize more of that front quad. In my opinion, if we went a little bit wider, it's really gonna be focusing more on that inner quad. So I guess the narrow stance 
really is going to be more outer quad and then how high or low you put your feet on the plate is going to determine you know more of the front part of the quad or more glute in it obviously we're adding in our leg curls and leg extensions in this this is just some accessory work anytime i do my leg curl i make sure i push my hips into the pad and try to use those bicep femoris or those hamstrings to really curl that weight up so on the leg press, we are using a little bit more narrow of a stance. This is going to be targeting more of that outer quad just slightly. You know, if we wanted to use a wider stance, it's going to be a little bit more of that inner quad. Um, the more your feet are towards the top of the plate, the more posterior chain you're going to just bring into play. And then the lower your feet are, the more that vastus medialis. Doing this in tricep fashion, we complete each exercise. We're doing 8 to 12 reps on everything here, a little bit higher volume. I love leg day. All the muscle definition just goes away. You just got big old tree trunks for legs. Moving on to our little conditioning. So today's conditioning is a butt kicker. It is still focused on legs with the first movement being overhead squat. I love overhead squats because it really forces you to keep a tight core and really focus on controlling the movement. The eccentric part, as you come down and touch your knee, you have to be under control. If it's on your back, it's a little bit easier to, to kind of just bounce up and down. But when you have to have a tight core, it's really important. Or when you have that weight over your head, it's really important you keep a tight core. Jake, in his cross of days, he's, he's great at these. Um, it's definitely great to train with somebody who's good at movements that you're not good at. You can see what you're doing uh, that isn't working, or you can see where you need to get better and, and make those changes. Definitely a, a little bit more of an advanced movement here. It's going to combine not only our, our legs, but a lot of core, and then obviously shoulders there. And then it definitely gasses you out quicker than normal lunges. From there, we're going straight into a 400 meter run. It's called a you go, I go cardio. I do something, Jake does it. He comes back, do the same thing, switch to exercise. After our run, we jump on the bike. We got 20 cows here. 20 cows is really just about how hard you can push, how much pain you can handle in a short period of time. It shouldn't take more than about 40 seconds. I think this first one I do 35. Jake does it sub 30. So this cardio I, I, I do, I love. And our last movement as part of our little circuit here is our GHD sit up. This is a great one for the abs because you're stretching so far down and coming so far up. That is our first set done. We do it all over again. The legs are absolutely just gas at this point. So much blood, volume, strength. We're doing some conditioning here now. So muscular endurance is shot. So we're doing two rounds completely, completely gassing out our legs here. I love finishing workouts like this. This Aerodyne just absolutely sucks this round, but you got you got one left to do. You got to get it done. Try to beat your first time. As you guys out there watching, go see how many cows you can do on the Aerodyne all out. 14 seconds. Jake did 20. I hit 27. 27 seconds for 20 cows. Finishing off with a GHD sit up, making sure that you touch the ground. I wasn't doing that on my first couple reps. You need to make sure you stretch and get your hands back up. I really like to focus on flexing my quads to start the movement. You can see Jake just being explosive here. On to the mobility aspect of things. Working out the legs, it's super important. As soon as you get on the leg workout, I would say to work, foam roll it, stretch it out, get some of that lactic acid flushed out. All right, guys, that's it from our first real leg day session back in the gym. It's gonna be one of those, when you try this, it's going to hurt, especially those last rounds on that little circuit. Those overhead squats, plus the run, the airdyne, working some legs and abs in there, just increasing your work capacity, increase your ability to get done with something, have lactic acid build up and continue to move on but you know you're gonna flush it out during the run so it really it's one of those things that's gonna be a mental check like you don't think you can go on you're gonna quit but if you think you can you'll be able to do it so let me know how this one goes you guys go check out more of these workouts at fitness culture and uh let me know in the box below what you guys want to see i'm gonna go uh i'm gonna go feed my legs i get some food i gotta go eat